Oh wow, that is so good. Like I'm drooling inside my mouth right now. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of In the Kitchen with the Korean Vegan. So, I don't know about you, but I love traveling around the holidays. Like not on Christmas, but like maybe before or after, just to get in the mood. And this year, my husband and I, Anthony, we're going to go to Italia, Italy, which is where half of my husband's family is from. We're going to be going to Rome, which is where all of Anthony's cousins are, and then we're going to go to Florence. So, in sort of anticipation of going to Italy, I thought today we would spend some time making some Italian inspired food. I think there's like a big debate on whether this is Italian food, Italian American food. I don't really care. It just tastes really, really good. <laughs> and we're going to start with, of course, marinara sauce, which is pretty foundational to Italian American cuisine. The reason I wanted to show you how to make marinara sauce is because this recipe is so easy, it's so versatile, and it's so delicious. It would basically be like a crime to not share it with you all. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to be cooking with three different kinds of tomatoes today. The first of them is called the Roma tomato. And contrary to what you might believe, these tomatoes are not endemic of Italy or Rome specifically. They were actually made right here in the United States in the 1950s. Now, Roma tomatoes are actually a cross between a basic red tomato here in the US and a San Marzano tomato, which is from Italy. Maybe that's why they call it the Roma tomato. These were bred specifically to be durable against illness and fungi back in the 1950s, right after the war, when people really wanted a good, stable, reliably predictable food. They're shaped like eggs, they're a little bit smaller, they've got a very thick skin, and in the inside, there's not a lot of liquid, which makes them very pulpy and thick and fleshy and perfect for sauces. These are heirloom tomatoes. These are actually some of my favorite tomatoes. Now, why are they called heirloom tomatoes? It's not because you'll find them at an antique shop. It's actually because these are all heirs to the most flavorful tomatoes from the prior generation of tomatoes. So the way that heirloom tomatoes come to be is that the farmers who picked the tomatoes choose the ones that were most flavorful, use their seeds to create the next generation of tomatoes. So you can see they come in all different shapes and sizes and colors because uniformity isn't the name of the game here. Flavor is. So each of these tomatoes is an heir to the most flavorful tomatoes. They're full of liquid, they're super juicy, incredible flavor, and I love using them for my red sauce. Last but not least are the Campari tomatoes. This one has a really fun story. So as you can see, they're kind of small. They're what I view as like a mix between a cherry or grape tomato and a regular Roma tomato. They're sometimes referred to as cocktail tomatoes and here's the story behind them. Campari tomatoes don't come from the Campari region of Italy. In fact, these tomatoes were created in Europe by the Dutch of all people. And the reason for the name Campari Campari is because they're named after a cocktail, a recipe that was created by a bartender in Milan back in the 1800s. Campari tomatoes are very, very, very sweet. They're small and they're compact. I love using these tomatoes for my red sauce. In fact, if I can't find good heirlooms and I can't find good Roma tomatoes, I always go for the Campari tomato in my grocery store. These are fantastic. So we've talked about the three different kinds of tomatoes that I'll be using in today's red sauce. Amazingly, none of them come from Italy. I know what you're thinking, anathema, right? If you want, you can certainly pick up a can of San Marzano tomatoes, and a lot of food bloggers think that's the way to go. For me, I like getting locally grown tomatoes if I can. I got all of these at my local farmer's market or grocery store, and I find that that often makes, for me, the tastiest red sauce. But if you'd like, go ahead and pick up a can of your favorite tomatoes, whichever they may be, and use them for this recipe as well. Okay, finally, we can get started with the recipe. So my red sauce starts with really three different ingredients. There aren't a lot to them. We're gonna have some shallots, we're also going to have some garlic and we're going to have some carrots. 
these, the carrots, that addition caused a little bit of controversy for me. I posted this recipe on my Instagram and an Italian American chef got incredibly angry that I included carrots in my red sauce. He said that I was culturally appropriating. <laughs> red sauce. Uh, to be fair, the addition of carrots to my red sauce I learned from my Italian father-in-law <laughs> who loves adding carrots to his red sauce because it adds a natural sweetness in lieu of sugar, which I really don't like and neither did he. So we're going to start by just chopping up some of the shallot as well as the carrot and garlic. The best thing about this recipe is how easy it is. This is a very rustic red sauce. Nothing needs to be perfectly minced, diced, and chopped here. Everything can be rough chopped. Just need to peel this stuff. So we'll start with these shallots. I hate prepping garlic, and one of the best things about this recipe is that I don't need to mince my garlic. Alrighty, so we're basically done chopping and prepping all of the aromatics and the veggies that are gonna go into the sauce, as you can see. So a lot of red sauce recipes require you to skin the tomato and seed them. I don't wanna do all of that. <laughs> it's a lot of work, and I've always found that my red sauce tastes fantastic with the added texture of the skin, as well as the seeds. You should also know that this pulpy area, almost gelatinous area that protects the seeds, well, guess what? That's where all of the flavor resides. The skin is also where the antioxidants like to reside. So I like to keep those things in my red sauce. If you wanna go ahead and skin and seed your tomatoes, more power to you. This recipe is about as easy peasy as it gets, which means we're not gonna do any of that. Okay, so we're gonna use a huge Dutch oven in order to make this sauce. You can use whatever pot you wanna use. Just make sure that it's large enough to accommodate the mess of tomatoes we just chopped up. So we're gonna start with putting this on, I would say, a medium high heat. And to this, we're gonna add a good bit of extra virgin olive oil. This is the kind of olive oil you do wanna use when you're making a dressing, i.e. not necessarily cooking oil. You wanna be able to enjoy the flavor of this oil. So make sure to use a good one. I'm gonna use about two to three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. To start, we may add some more later. So we're gonna wait for that to get nice and hot before we add the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so our oil is nice and hot. We're just gonna add our garlic. We're gonna add our rough chopped shallots. And we're also gonna add our rough chopped carrots. And we're gonna let these veggies sweat a little bit in the hot oil. To this, I'm gonna add a huge pinch of salt. And that's gonna help draw out the liquids in our shallots, our carrots, and even our garlic to give us that aromatic flavor. Our shallots are getting soft and translucent. I'm gonna add some dried herbs here some dried oregano, dried basil, say about two tablespoons of dried herbs. It smells marvelous in here. <laughs> you see that color at the bottom of your pan? That color is gold. That color is flavor. We're gonna deglaze this with a little bit of balsamic vinegar. To this, we're gonna add our tomatoes. Let's give this a stir here. Now sometimes people like to add a little bit of wine or a little bit of broth to this. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to mess with the natural flavor of the tomato. And you'll find that the liquid in the heirloom tomatoes and the Campari tomatoes is more than enough to create a sauce. All right, I'm just gonna hit this with another big fat pinch of salt. It's not gonna make it salty, guys. Don't worry about that. It's just gonna make it flavorful. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of cracked black pepper. Okay, we're gonna put the cover over the top, let it sit for about five minutes, come back and take a look, and we'll see where it's at. 
Okay, here we are at the five minute mark. You can see that it's already starting to break down and hopefully you can see at the bottom, look at that liquid, see? See, there you have no fear that your sauce is, is, is going to be not liquidy enough. In fact, if anything, at the end of this, you're gonna be like, my sauce is too liquidy. Don't worry, that's why we take our time here when we're making this sauce. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Okay, it's at this point where I'm gonna add just some fresh herbs. We're gonna add some fresh basil here. The reason I don't like to add fresh basil at the very beginning is because I don't want it to burn. I wanna make sure we have enough liquid to give it a very soft place to live. Got here some fresh oregano as well. Just gonna toss that in here. I love oregano. It's one of my favorite herbs. I feel like it just makes everything taste better. Just gonna give this a mix. And then this is the easiest part of the recipe. You're just gonna let it cook <laughs> for about 30, 45 minutes. I'm gonna lower the heat to about a medium low and just let this simmer. So we're gonna use the red sauce in order to make this beautiful, delicious, amazing pasta. And it's gonna start with really three vegetables. We've got some broccoli. We've also got some more shallot and we've got just a little bit more garlic. I'm not gonna overdo it on the garlic and the shallot. You can if you want to, but we've got a ton of garlic and shallot already in the red sauce, so I don't wanna overpower our pasta with those two flavors. So we're just gonna chop these up. The other thing about broccoli is I don't like big chunks of broccoli like this one. If I find a big chunk of broccoli, I'm just gonna tear it up with my hands a little bit. All right, we're done prepping our broccoli. Now we're just going to ribbon up some shallot and mince up some garlic. You know my favorite thing to do. Now we're gonna prep our sausage. I know what you're thinking. I'm vegan, I'm Korean, how are you gonna make sausage? I'm actually gonna be using one of my favorite meat alternatives, it's called field roast. It's basically the only meat alternative that we use, and I'm gonna use the Italian sausage variety. I'm just gonna use one sausage link. Don't eat the plastic casing. gonna chop it up into little hunky bits here. I'm gonna stick it into my miniature food processor. Oh, perfect. See here, it looks just like ground sausage. All right, so we basically prepped all of our ingredients for our pasta. We've got our broccoli, we've got here our ground sausage, and we've also got here our shallots and our garlic, and that's basically it. We're just gonna wait for our sauce to finish cooking up, and then we're gonna make all the magic happen. All right, so our sauce has been cooking for a bit, and I think it's ready. Wow. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use an immersion blender and I'm gonna make it sort of a chunky, rustic sauce. If you want a total tomato puree, a very smooth sauce, you can stick this into your blender and blend it up until you get a nice, very thick, very smooth sauce. I like chunky sauces, so we're just going to use an immersion blender here. It's a little bit easier. I will say, for my purposes, I would give this another 30 minutes, not on the stovetop, but just to cool. That way you don't have like hot sauce splattering up in your face while you're blending it with the immersion blender. Make sure that you know the bottom of the immersion blender never touches the bottom of your pan. Be very careful about that. <laughs> All right, and I think we're good. Oh wow, that is so good. Like I'm drooling inside my mouth right now. <laughs> it's so good. All right, so now that we have perfected our red sauce, and I truly mean perfect, we're gonna make pasta. So today I'm gonna be using rigatoni. This is one of my favorite pastas for the type of dish we're making. You do wanna pay attention to the noodle that you're using for whatever sauce that you're gonna be using. Now, if I was just using the marinara, I would probably go with a spaghetti or even an angel hair or a penne because those require, I think, a lighter sauce. Make sure that you salt your pasta water very generously. And then we're just gonna add our pasta. 10 to 12 minutes on the cook time. 
Okay, so while our pasta is cooking, we're now just gonna prep the aromatics a little bit. Remember, we chopped up some shallot, we minced up some garlic, we chopped up some broccoli, and we also ground up our vegan Italian sauces. So we're gonna get all of these things kind of working so that it's ready when our pasta is cooked. So I've got here just a very nice pan. This is my favorite pan. It also happens to be an Italian pan. I'm gonna turn this on about medium high. And to this, we're gonna add about a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. There we go. We're gonna wait for that to get nice and hot, about a minute. All right, so our oil is nice and hot. To this, we're gonna add our garlic as well as our shallots. Next, we're gonna add our ground sausage. We're just gonna let this cook for a little bit. I am gonna add just a pinch of salt to draw out the flavors of the shallot and just a quick turn of the cracked black pepper. Don't need to add a lot because the sausage already has a ton of flavor in it and you all know we have a ton of flavor in our red sauce. So our pasta is cooking. At this point, I'm gonna collect a little bit of that pasta water here. I'm gonna get two healthy ladlefuls of that starchy pasta water. And I'm gonna pour it over, there we go. Okay, to this we're gonna add our chopped broccoli. Okay, so now our pasta is cooked. I'm gonna add it to our pan here. To lower the heat. Now, I'm gonna add our beautiful red sauce. A little bit more. I'm just gonna add just a tiny little bit of extra virgin olive oil. There we go. I'm gonna add some fresh cracked black pepper here. If you want, you can grate some vegan parm over this. I frankly don't feel the need to. Tastes just fine without it. All right, our pasta is basically done. You can sort of jazz it up a little bit with a bit more olive oil, more cracked black pepper. If you wanna season it with more salt, like I said, that grated vegan parm. But let's give it a try as is. Take my fork out here. Give this a try. I want a little bit of broccoli with my, ooh, this looks like a money bite right here. Mmm, mmm, that's so good. That's <laughs> so good. It tastes like you were coming home after a really long journey outside in the winter cold and your grandma has made you this amazing bowl of pasta. She's been slaving away all day on her red sauce. Oh my God, it is so good. You taste every single tomato that we put into that red sauce. You get that lovely crunch from the broccoli. You get that insane fennel from the sausage that we put in here. This is such a fantastic recipe. It's so easy to make, and it's just one of many things that you can make with that incredible red sauce that we started out with. I hope that you try making this. If you did, make sure to comment and let me know. If you like this video, please leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to check out all the other In the Kitchen with the Korean Vegan videos that I will be posting to this channel right here. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.